so as you guys saw from the title, this is not going to be the happy-go-lucky vlogging that you're used to on my channel. Um, instead, this was a, a long time coming video. I uh, have been meaning to record this, but I just kind of needed to um, take some time for myself, um, really center myself and be emotionally and mentally ready to discuss all of this with you. So, um, this is going to be my miscarriage story. I figured I could sit down with all of you and just do a little story time and discuss um, my experience and what I went through in all aspects of my life, emotionally, mentally, physically, um, spiritually, and i um, hoping that um, with this video it can reach somebody who is struggling or possibly going through the same thing that I've gone through um, and just kind of needs a shoulder or a voice or a video to know that you're not alone and that this does happen to a lot of women just um we tend to stay silent wow. okay so i promised myself i wasn't gonna cry during this video <laughs> but it still is pretty fresh um I want this video to be as emotionally, I want this video to be as informational as possible for everyone out there. Um, but it is emotional. There's emotional aspects to all of this that we go through. So I apologize in advance if, if I have to take a break because unfortunately with a video like this, it is raw it is real and there's not much editing to be done on something that is so real um, and I, I just kind of want you guys to um, hear me out on a very personal level and um, and get my take on everything okay Um, alright, sorry. <clears throat> so, um, I have gone through two miscarriages. I have lost two pregnancies. And, um, I can do a little backstory on my first loss. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail because during that time, um, I was very much alone. I was going through it very much alone and um, I was a lot younger, a lot less educated, and a lot less prepared. So um, when I was going through those steps and that process, it was extremely scary and as, as bad as it's going to sound, I just wanted it to get over with. I just wanted it to be done. And I wanted to continue my life. Um, I lost my daughter, Leilani. That is what we ended up naming her. On January 21st of 2012. I was uh, approximately four months along, and um, what I was told to me at the time is that she had a hole in her heart, and um, there was nothing really that could be done, so I ultimately kind of knew that the pregnancy would, would be lost. Um, I went in for my ultrasound a few weeks later, and there was no heartbeat. Now like I stated before, in that 
pregnancy, I was very much alone. Um, me and her father weren't uh, in a good place at the time. And that's really as far as I'm gonna go in with that. Um, and I was also living uh, far away from family, so I didn't have that support either. Um, so ultimately, I ended up miscarrying her and I did opt for a DNC because I was further along and um, again, I was young and I really was not very educated in the whole process or in anything for that matter in pregnancy itself. Um, all I really knew was that I have been infertile for since I hit puberty. I mean, I had gotten PCOS shortly after, and if anyone's familiar with PCOS, it um, basically causes infertility and because of hormones and just it's just a whole bunch to it. Um, I strongly recommend that if you aren't educated on PCOS, I did do a video before this uh, a little bit describing PCOS and what it's all about. Um, but if you don't know anything about it, I strongly encourage you to Google and do your research um, because you might be struggling with that. You just, you never know. But I myself found out I had it when I was 15 and struggled with periods and getting them regularly. Um, I struggled with really bad cystic acne and shortly after that uh, well I also struggled with hair growth in places that women just shouldn't have hair and uh, shortly after that I when I started uh, planning for a family realized that that too was going to be a problem so um, I had seen a fertility doctor at early on in my life and I did do IUI which is an insemination um, I did two rounds of that and it was very pricey so I didn't opt to do IVF because I didn't have the money for that um, now looking back now having also worked for a fertility doctor at some point in my life I think had I known what I know now I'd have probably opted or saved my money instead of doing insemination and done IVF but um so I did see a particular doctor and it didn't work so I kind of just in my mind I wrapped my mind around the fact that I just probably wasn't going to have kids of my own and um for a long time I wasn't okay with that I uh you want to be a mom, you want to be able to have your own kids, you want to be able to go through the ups and downs of pregnancy, you want to go through the nausea, you want to go through the happy times, you want to see your belly grow and have a gender reveal and you want to do all of those things and you want to ultimately lead to the road where you're in the hospital bed with your healthy breathing baby boy or girl and I just couldn't wrap my mind around the fact that I might never have that. Um, so fast forward to a few years later and I met my baby's father and um, I wasn't using any kind of precautions because I didn't really think I needed to. I, I basically was considered infertile. and. My periods were so irregular and I had gone at that point 10, 12 years without having gotten pregnant. And by the grace of God, I got pregnant. Now, um, like I said before in the video, um, him and I weren't in a good place, but um, I did let him know that I, had, I was pregnant and he was um, su as supportive as he could be during that time um, when I found out. It was scary because I wasn't 
around family or anyone really. I was in a completely new state, um, but but it was exciting too. Just the idea, I'm gonna be a mom, you know? Um, just everything starts to cloud your mind, like, oh, <laughs> the feedings at night, and I'm gonna have someone that's gonna call me mommy, and I'm gonna be in charge of a little human being. Like, all of those things started to really make me happy. So I was ultimately more, I was ultimately filled with more happiness than I was with fear. So, um, pregnancy for the most part was good. Um, the first few months were, um, I did have nausea and, um, really bad headaches and, um, I remember a couple of times I would, I had fainting spells and that was probably the first time that it triggered something's not right. I was at work and um, at that time I worked in a call center and I had fainted and I don't really remember much. I just remember being really hot and not understanding why I was on the floor um, and just scared out of my mind. Um, most of the people I worked with knew I was pregnant so um, I did go to the doctors immediately after that and um, the doctor said that um, it, he wasn't sure it could be because I hadn't eaten much that day or um, low iron dehydration it could have been a variety of things um, but never once did we think there was anything wrong with the baby until I had my four month ultrasound and um, they saw that there's a hole in the heart I don't know the medical term for that I just know that that's what was told to me um, and then my next ultrasound, which was a couple weeks later, there was no heartbeat. And I just kind of had to, at that point, realize that all of my hopes and my dreams and my fantasies in my mind were now gone. And I had to do this on my own. I had to get the courage to process it and to just start making moves. That was kind of where my mind, my mentality was at that time. It was just, okay, baby's gone. Um, what do I need to do now? What is my next step? Where do we go from here? That, that was, I think at that point, I kind of just had shields on and put my emotional um, sadness and everything on pause and just, go 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 I had to get things done also I feel like I because I was so young I just wanted it over with you know I just okay like the baby's gone like I just I want to hurry up and do what I need to do get myself cleared out whatever I need to do um, and just go on with my life just move past this that's that was my my, my mentality um, so we did opt for a DNC, and although this all happened in 2012, it is still very real, very raw, very um, fresh. It is a wound that I don't think will ever go away, and I, I hope it never does, because um, if anyone ever tells you if you're going through this or any form of this if you're going through miscarriage a stillbirth and um atopic pregnancy anything don't ever let anyone tell you that you're not allowed to mourn for a pregnancy that didn't come to life to birth um don't ever let anyone tell you that it didn't count or that 
it's different or that um, that there's a comparison from a child who lived to be three months old outside of the womb from a child that never even got to see the world outside of the womb. I, I don't, there is no difference, I'm sorry. And some people might disagree with me, but I think you really have to go through this to agree. You just, you don't, don't ever put yourself in someone's shoes if you've never experienced it. So don't ever say these things to someone who's lost a child if you have never lost one in any way, shape, or form. So that's, that's all I have to say about that part. Um, so after that miscarriage, it was very hard. I needed to find somewhere I could cope with it. All of a sudden my emotions just came to life. Um, it seems like those shields were gone and I was very depressed. I did I hit it very well I'm very good at doing that apparently and I was very very much depressed I I felt like my body failed me I felt like it was a cruel joke to blast someone with a baby I need a minute. Give me a minute. Okay. Sorry, guys. I think this is going to be a lot harder than I thought. Um, I, um, I was very, very mad at God. I was very mad. Um, because I thought what a cruel, cruel thing to do to bless somebody with a baby and then take it away. Oh my gosh. So yeah, I had a feeling this was going to happen. This is why it's taken me so long um, to sit down and record this but um, we're gonna get through this I'm gonna I'm gonna get through this video <clears throat> all right so I was very upset with God and um, honestly I was just very upset with the world um, because it's, it's so weird how oh, during that time, all of a sudden, everyone was getting pregnant. And I just thought, why? Why, why are you, why are they getting what I wanted? Why is this person being blessed with a baby and this person? And, and, and mine was taken from me. And that's a hard pill to swallow, but, um, so I did, I found comfort in, um, therapy. I did go to therapy for that. I found comfort in what they call, um, infant loss vigils. And I have religiously and faithfully done that every year now. Um. October 15th is Infant Loss Awareness Day and I felt like if I can put my energy into something to remember my baby even if it's just one day out of the year why not you know it would be kind of like when you put all of your energy into a birthday for your child every year so I kind of kind of looked at it like that and it helped and it has helped it's been something it's, it's been very therapeutic um, 
for me and now for my family it's been very therapeutic for us to do um i hate to word it like this but i am a strong believer that everything happens for a reason now i'm not trying to say that my baby died for a reason and that someone who's going through this it's because it's for a reason but i do believe that it is that it is everything happens for a reason um the baby wasn't healthy and maybe now being more educated and being a lot older um knowing more maybe i wouldn't have been able to handle any possible medical things needed for the baby um i don't know i don't have the answers i just I just have conclusions in my mind on all of it to try and help me cope with it and it's helped some so that was um in 2012 and we are now in 2020 and it's been quite a few years now and leilani is still a very big part of my family, a very big part of my whole family, um, she's always remembered, and I will always love that little girl. Always. But, um, fast forward to March of, um, I'm sorry, I think it was the end of, or beginning of April. So fast forward to April 2020. And I wasn't feeling quite myself. I um, was very, very tired. And these are all different feelings than I felt the first time. But I was just very, very, very tired. And I wasn't understanding why. Um my breasts were hurting like um similar to the pains that you would get before you start your menstrual period um so i was kind of just assuming my period was coming but when i calculated i had already been a week late technically um i would have started a week before and i hadn't gotten my period and i just thought well pcos right so maybe it's just a little off this month and I um, didn't think much of it and then um, my husband said well why don't you just take a pregnancy test and I thought to myself I mean fine I'll take it but it's gonna say no so let me humor you and let me go ahead and take it tomorrow morning so he said okay so he went off to work and the next morning I took it again me thinking it was probably gonna come out negative no big deal I just went heat on the stick put it right by the sink and kind of just forgot about it finished doing what I needed to do for the morning and looked getting ready to throw it out really and looked and had to kind of like do a double take immediately after that i grabbed another test thinking maybe that was a fluke maybe it was an old test like, i don't know i just it was hard to believe that i was pregnant i just i couldn't believe it oh my God. eight years of not being able to come out pregnant again since my first miscarriage and I just kind of at that point came to terms with being a stepmom came to terms with not having children of my own I came to terms with the fact that maybe that's what God put me on this on this earth to do is to mother a child to be there for a child but just not to give birth to my own child if that makes any sense and 
that helped me come to terms with everything. Um, I was okay with it. My mental, my mental state just, I was okay with it. And so I grabbed another test and tried to get as much pee as I could and put the stick in and sure enough, it immediately turned positive. Like, <laughs> there was no waiting. It was just like two lines. Yes, you're pregnant. And I'm like, oh my God, like, what? I was, I was so excited. It was a long time coming. It, it, it was just like, wow, you know, things couldn't be any better than this. And at that point, my mind just started rushing with like, how am I going to tell my husband? Um, um, oh my gosh, I could do something special. So I did. I went ahead and did a little um, thing for him so that when he came home from work, he could be surprised. And since I am a blogger um, and an influencer here on YouTube, I figured what a prime opportunity to get him involved and yet he wouldn't think much of it. He would just think I'm making a video and surprise him. So I did and it was a really good surprise. He was happy, I was happy. The change that was going to happen in our minds was just so positive and we were just on cloud nine. I, once he told, or once I told him, now also, I will go ahead and because I would love to keep it as a memorabilia for me and my family so shortly after I upload this video I will be uploading um, a memory album I guess of this last pregnancy um, unfortunately from my first one I didn't have a whole lot from that I didn't have videos I wasn't really into YouTube at the time I didn't have a lot of pictures, although in the beginning of this video, um, you saw her sonogram. Um, she was the one in the middle, and then this recent pregnancy were the one um, were the ultrasounds that were on the sides of her. Um, but so unfortunately, I don't have much from from that pregnancy. I, I regret that so much, but I can't do much about it now. Um, but this one, I tried to enter it differently and record as much as I could and take as many pictures, belly pictures, everything that I could. Um, so the video that I'll be uploading shortly after this will be basically just a montage of when I told my husband about the pregnancy. Um, when we told the family our sonograms and when we heard the baby's heartbeat for the first time um, so we have all that and I'll be sure to post that in the next video which is kind of why I made this video as well so after he found out and we immediately sat down well first we were just super excited and in shock but then we sat down and we started planning like okay so you're gonna call tomorrow and you're gonna call the OBGYN and you're gonna get an appointment so I did all that and the appointment was scheduled for a week from that date and we went. And um, the appointment went well for the most part. Um, That's kind of when the pandemic started so unfortunately he wasn't able to go in with me for that first ultrasound, I mean for that first appointment because at the first appointment they just do like blood work and they do like a urine pregnancy test to confirm. And then um, he does, he did like a pelvic exam on me and that was basically, oh, and a pap smear. So that was basically it that they did. Um, he asked, answered a lot of questions and that, that was basically my first appointment. Um, they did confirm I was pregnant. 
um, due to the timing of my last period. And when I went, they were calculating me around five and a half weeks, um, which looking back on it, I think maybe that should have been the red flag because I was measuring, I was measuring less than I should have. So but I just, I didn't think much of it. I was just excited. So after that appointment, I, um, I told my husband I wasn't very comfortable with the OBGYN that we had at that appointment because I didn't feel like they did everything they should have. Um, I'm sorry, they didn't take my blood and that was my main thing. When you have your first appointment, they should be, they should have, draw your blood right then and there. They should take, they, they, it's just something that they're supposed to do to make sure that your HCG levels are rising, to make sure that everything is, is good. Um, and they didn't do that and I just found it so weird so um so I told him I wasn't comfortable and that I wanted to find another OB so we ended up going to another OB we made another appointment and then I got another appointment a week later so I basically was like one week I had an appointment and then the next week I had another appointment with a different OBGYN so we went to that one and immediately I felt so different it was so much more welcoming um they did my blood draws, like they did everything that they needed to do, a full panel. Uh, I think it was like a pregnancy panel, yeah, full pregnancy panel. And an ultrasound, which I just thought was unbelievable. Like, I'm going to do an ultrasound. Like, I was so excited. So, oh, and my husband got to go with me, so that was even better. So, we go in, we go into the ultrasound, and there's the baby. And we're just so excited. It's unreal, you know. He wasn't really around for the first pregnancy, so this one was just, it was just amazing, you know? And we both really enjoyed it, and it was, it was great. Now, unfortunately, I was too early. They calculated me at that appointment at also, um, like, five weeks and seven days, so couple of days from my last appointment which was also odd because the uh, last point was a week ago so I found that odd I thought I should already be in six weeks but it wasn't and they said well could just be that you ovulated later than you thought you did and so all you know you didn't come out pregnant when you thought and you know it could just also be the baby's just a lot young like it's too early on so, I mean, I believed it all, and I was like, okay, okay, and so we left with our little ultrasound picture and just everything. We were super excited, and after that initial appointment, since everything was just so good and positive, we kind of like looked at each other and we're like, I really want to tell everybody. I really want to tell my parents, and he really wanted to tell his parents, and I wanted to tell my sister and I just we just wanted to tell people um, and we thought about it and you know a lot of people consider it bad luck and so on and so forth to um, to announce a pregnancy before your second trimester but I am living proof that even when you're in your second trimester you can lose a pregnancy so why not enjoy the moment why not just be happy for the amount of time that you're going to be happy for at the end of the day life is short like let's just enjoy this you know i mean a pregnancy is not guaranteed it's not it's not guaranteed you're going to last nine months you can lose a pregnancy at four weeks you can lose a pregnancy at four months or you can lose a pregnancy when you're giving birth so I said, due to the previous experience, there is no safe zone for a pregnancy, nor is there a safe zone in particular for someone with PCOS. So I said, you know what, let's do this. Let's tell people, screw it, let's do it. And we did. We made um, nice little boxes, um, gifts for each, each of them, um, one of them. I believe it was my sister's. I gave her um, a onesie and little um, 
coupons, I don't know what they call them, <laughs> uh, pacifiers, pacifier, and so that when she opened it, she would immediately, you know, no. And then with his parents and my parents, uh, we gave them um, little baby shoes and also pacifiers. And then with my brother, um, we gave him a bottle of sparkling cider and on it was a note saying Uncle John saved this for December um, for all of us to celebrate my arrival and I just thought it was so beautiful and I, I was overwhelmed with the amount of love and happiness that we got from everyone and it was just an just an overwhelming feeling of happiness from every everyone you know it's, I, I don't know if it's because it's part in particular um, if it's because it's me and they're like you've struggled so long you know like this is a blessing and and I just that's it's exactly how it felt I'm like maybe this was the time you know every, it's all about timing and maybe this was it you know we hadn't planned for it nothing it just happened and those are the best surprises you know when the things just happen so um, we ended up making an announcement on social media I didn't do it here on YouTube just because um, I don't really know why looking back now I kind of wish I would have even though it ended tragically um, I kind of wish I would have because I do see you guys as part of my family and um i think being transparent is so important when you're an influencer on social media so so yeah i do regret that but um i did i went ahead i made an announcement um we made a cute little announcement picture and it was just great it was amazing um and then fast forward to a week later and I was having cramping and I just knew something was wrong. It's like an intuition that you get, you know, you know your body and I just felt like something wasn't right and I just kept saying, you know, something's not right and nobody was believing me. It was either, oh, well, you know, you're probably, it's probably just growing pains, like, you know, your, your uterus is growing and I'm like, I just it's too early I, do, I don't I didn't believe that I tried because I wanted to believe anything other than the negative stuff that was going on in my head but I knew better and the fact that I wasn't spotting yet was a positive for me I was like okay well that's a good sign so I, I held on to that I held on to that tightly and then you know, I didn't have any pregnancy symptoms other than really bad migraines and my breast hurting. I didn't have nausea this time around. I didn't, I was a little bit tired more than usual, but I just didn't have any symptoms. I, I was eating fine. I was not nauseous. I was sleeping fine. I, I thought everything was great. I thought my, this pregnancy is a breeze, you know, everything's going good. And I even, um, talk to my OBGYN about it because it concerned me like there's so many people who get pregnant and they have like they're sick like you know they are hurling over the toilet so sick and I'm like I haven't felt nauseous and he just kind of joked and he's like well that's a good thing you know like that you know most people would would kill to have a pregnancy like that and I'm like well yeah but I'm worried because they it because Google is your best friend and your worst enemy and I googled and unfortunately I mean it says that when you have pregnancy symptoms that means your pregnancy is going really well so I was I was really praying for some pregnancy symptoms and I just wasn't feeling anything um, so I was anxious for the next appointment because I was just filled with anxiety and fear and everything you could think of in the book so I was anxious for my next appointment and when we went, literally, I was having a weekly appointment at this point, and I was okay with that. But um, 
I went to my weekly appointment and that's when uh, we heard the heartbeat for the first time. <laughs> and it was such a beautiful sound. And I cried and my husband cried and it was great. It was an amazing thing to, to feel that comfort in a sense. Like it's, it's so hard in the beginning weeks and months of your pregnancy because you don't feel anything. So it's like, am I pregnant? And is an alien grown in there? You know, like you just, you don't, you don't feel anything. So it, you're just going about life, not really paying too much mind to it until that that ultrasound comes around until you start getting your appointments and um, I got lucky because I was having them weekly but most people have to wait a good month before they even get a first appointment so um, so yeah that was so reassuring and positive and it just it made me feel like okay I can breathe like there's a baby's heartbeat and it's a strong one and it's great and I shared that with my mom and my sister and I was like and my sister-in-law and I was just like peace peaceful right you know like everything's gonna be okay well a couple of days um, after that ultrasound I went to the restroom and saw that there was a spot of blood on my on my toilet paper when I cleaned myself and it wasn't red it was more of a like a, a brownish and I called my OB and I said, I'm spotting. And I explained exactly the, the color and the amount and were there any clots with it. And um, I told him there was very little one. There was a really small and I wish I had taken a picture of it and so I could show you guys because my number one goal for this video is to educate you guys because I know when I was going through all of this and I realized this, this one I'm explaining now was very recent. It was, I miscarried in May and we're now in July. So, um, I remember when I was going through it, I searched everywhere I could. Any platform I could think of, I searched. And YouTube was my go-to for the most part. And there was not very many videos about this. And then the videos that I did find, work slightly different than my, what I was experiencing and I just felt like no that's not it or yeah oh no maybe that's it you know like I was so confused and so I'm kind of hoping that this video can give you guys that comfort and and insight on what could possibly be happening to you or whether or not we are kind of went through the same thing but um so yeah I wish I'd have been able to take a picture and post it here for you guys but I didn't so it was literally a little little itty bitty clot like this and um, it's kind of similar I don't know not everybody goes through this but um, sometimes during your periods you'll get like just a little clot and it's kind of like a clot of blood right um, that's kind of like what it was and so I didn't really I was worried but I just I knew it wasn't the baby so I was like well maybe it's um, implantation bleeding I really didn't know I was just kind of hoping and so my OB told me well we'll go ahead and set you up for an appointment your you will keep your appointment for next week we'll see what's going on if the bleeding gets heavier call let us know unfortunately they were closed on the weekend so when things started getting worse I ended up having to go to the ER and quite honestly that's when things really started to um, get hard um, my first trip to the ER because there was more than one um, so shortly after speaking to my OB he said if it got worse to go ahead and call them and I did call However, they had an after service, so it was like an on-call doctor that called me back and basically didn't really tell me much more than I already knew, which is you could possibly be having a threatened, mis 
threatened abortion, which is the medical term for a possible miscarriage. Um, or should I say that's the proper term? Okay, so we'll get into that in a second. But um, you never want to hear it. You never want to hear abortion at all. But um, so he said you you could possibly be having a threatened abortion, um, but just keep an eye on the bleeding. And I told him, well, I'm here in the ER right now. So he's like, okay, well, let us keep us in contact. Um, keep in contact with us. Let us know what's going on. I said, okay. Well, that appointment in the ER, that initial one actually was okay in the sense that I was able to see the baby again. The baby's heartbeat was still there. The ultrasound tech was absolutely amazing. They're not allowed to tell you much, but she told me enough for me to feel at peace. Um, so I went home that night. Um, they told me I had a um, yeast infection and that that was common in pregnancy so they gave me some medication for that I double checked with my OB he said that that was safe um, so I took that and they said that the baby's heart was good one thing they didn't check was my HCG levels which was odd to me um, but everything was good um, so I felt okay. They said the spotting, I mean, just keep an eye on it. So that's what I was doing. Pregnancy after pregnancy loss is the hardest thing anyone can go through. Any woman could go through. Once you lose a child, once you lose a pregnancy, your pregnancy afterwards is so scary. And I don't think many people understood that. That is why I was so fearful. That is why every little thing that I felt, I was so intuitive on everything because I've been through this. I wanted to avoid going through it again. I wanted a healthy pregnancy. I wanted to see my baby at the end of the road. I just, it's hard. Don't let anyone ever tell you it's easy because it's hard and you're constantly worrying and then you know i was constantly telling myself if i just make it to week seven or if i just make it to three months or if i just make it past my first trimester if i just make it i was constantly just making myself feel like you know if i just get to this point we'll be okay but you're never okay you're constantly going to be worrying and you're constantly going to be wondering why why you're not feeling this kick, or in my case, why I was cramping, why my cramps were slightly severe, uh, why I was spotting, I didn't spot the first time. You know, like, I was comparing, and every pregnancy is different, I know, but I was just so worried, and for good reason. So, the following week, I went to see my OB, I told him everything that happened at the ER, he told me... To stop going to the ER because that was fine. Um, my OB is a very, he's, he was very good. He was very comforting. He was very educated. He told me everything I needed um, to hear. The only thing I didn't like about him is that, or I mean, he's still my OB, but the only thing that I disliked about it is that I'm one of those people that just, just give it to me. You know, just, just be real with me. Is it bad? Is it good? And I know that he can't ultimately say you're going to miscarry or mm, it's looking great. You know, like he just, he was just going off of the fact that there is still a heartbeat in there. And that's what I loved about him is that he kept me afloat. He kept me positive. And he said, stop going to the ER. Stop worrying yourself and just realize that your baby has a strong heartbeat in there. You're good. You're spotting. Okay. We'll keep an eye on that. But you're good. So he put me on progesterone because with PCOS, progesterone levels tend to be lower. And during pregnancy, your progesterone needs to be at a good rate because you can, that is what keeps your pregnancy going strong. So he did put me on progesterone. Um, that made me a lot more drowsy throughout the days. But, um, I felt like it sort of helped, but then 
I also felt like it prolonged the inevitable. So, I don't know. It's like a double-edged sword, so I don't know. But, um, so after that appointment, me and Mike felt so much better. We felt more um, confident about the pregnancy. We felt like the ER visit was just unnecessary. Um, and we decided to just let it go. But the following weekend, my bleeding got heavier. It was still brown, but it was just heavier. It was literally starting to look, it was actually starting to stain my underwears. At one point, when I was spotting before, it would just be when I would clean myself, but now it was literally leaking onto my underwears. And I thought, oh, this is not good. And then I saw a clot. And this clot, was a lot bigger than the one I saw before and it was about that size and it looked like tissue but not really I, I really again wish I would have taken a picture um, it just looked gooey I, I didn't I don't really know because I did look at it and I, I don't know much more of that I tried to explain it to my OB and he really didn't really have an explanation for that but um, I went to the ER again because this time knowing that my bleeding was getting heavier and the fears that were already inside of me, I, I was crying so much that day, that night and begging my husband to take me to the ER because I just, I needed, I felt like I needed reassurance every week and it's so hard it's so hard man it's so hard and um the fact that i was bleeding more was even scarier you know you don't you're not supposed to bleed during pregnancy that is just yes sometimes you do yes sometimes it can be normal i don't want to say you just aren't supposed to bleed because it can be normal spotting can be very normal during pregnancy but this was not spotting and I was so, I just, I knew, I knew something was wrong. And we went and this visit um, at the ER was a lot different than the last, the first one. Um, I waited there for quite some time. I, it felt like forever. I know it was at least an hour that went by, but I felt like forever I was laying on a gurney and I was just laying there for ever looking at the ceiling and the signs and crying because I'm scared out of my mind. Um, they took my blood and then they did a pelvic exam on me. And the nurse that did the pelvic exam on me told me that my bleeding wasn't as bad as I was making it or as I as she thought it would have been so that was a positive sign she said and then they did the ultrasound on me and the ultrasound tech that I had this time around was very cold very she didn't say anything and I I mean that's their job I'm not supposed to but she she really was just so cold she just did the vaginal ultrasound and then the one above like right there on your stomach and I just wanted a, I just wanted confirmation that a baby was still there and she couldn't even give me that so that was done and I went back in the waiting area laid back down and waited for what felt like another hour and the doctor finally came out and told me that my HCG levels were dropping. And then told me that I was miscarrying. And, uh, and it's, it's oh God. Mm -hmm. 
it's not like I didn't know it already because I, I felt it. I guess it was just kind of me hoping that it wasn't a miscarriage that by some sort of miracle that I was going to leave that hospital and everything was going to be good. So I left that hospital in tears and had to confront Mike in tears and tell him that our baby was gone. And we went that whole weekend mourning for a baby that we wanted, for a baby that we had plans, so many plans. For a baby that felt like a dream come true and was taken away from us once again. And it wasn't fair. Sorry, had to take a minute. Um, but then um, the following week, we went for our ultrasound and we went in already assuming the doctor was gonna tell us that our baby had passed um, because that's what was told to us at the emergency room. And We go in for the ultrasound, and to our surprise, there's a heartbeat. And I was floored. Me and him just looked at each other like, is this a joke? Because we spent the whole weekend assuming our baby was gone and that we'd be coming into this appointment planning for possibly another DNC or a pill to do it naturally I don't know and it was a completely different appointment and I thought oh my god he listened he he blessed us he this baby is strong as hell it's a survivor it's a strong baby and I still feel that way to this day. It's a strong little baby. Um, so, needless to say, we left that appointment ecstatic and positive and joyful and just like all of our dreams and just rematerialized. And now we can continue planning the things that we were planning because our baby's still there and that was a very very good week I, I thought I'm gonna stop thinking stop worrying and enjoy it and just love on this little baby and my in my tummy and just love on my family and and be happy and I did also do some precautionary things that the OB wanted me to do basically um, no strenuous exercise and um, I had to kind of be on bed rest just because of the spotting so I did that and I just I was very positive about it I, I was like this is gonna this is gonna happen this baby is a survivor and so I'm gonna survive this and we're gonna get through this together and on my two-month appointment I was now eight weeks along we went in and no heartbeat was detected. And that's hard. You know, I still am so very angry with the hospital because you don't mess with someone's emotions like that. You don't tell someone that their baby is gone. If it isn't, I mean, was there a heartbeat? I'd like, I have asked so many questions that I'd like answers to. Was there a heartbeat? Why would you tell me that my baby was dying or dead if 
if there was possibly a heartbreak even if it was a, a weak one you know you just don't do that and I'm still filled with that anger from them but at the same time I'm very appreciative with everyone else that surrounded me with love and support my friends my family my my husband because even though he was going through loss as well and he was handling it the way he had to handle it he was still so very supportive and I couldn't be more appreciative of that but um, when my OB came in that day and told me unfortunately you lost your pregnancy I did break down because that had been such an emotional two weeks um, of up and down and I was an emotional wreck and um, he told me um, do you want to discuss the further steps or do you want to give it a couple of days and I just just like the first time I kind of just decided to push down my emotions and put some shields up and just get through it and so I told him no we don't need to wait we can discuss this now I don't want to do it naturally I told him I don't want to pass this naturally because I don't want to see anything I don't want to see my baby in a toilet um, so I opted for a DNC and a lot of people have their own feelings on DNC but um, me personally I felt like it was the best for me and my family because I didn't want to live in that hole that I was in in that hole of misery and depression I wanted to just get through it I had gotten through it once before I wanted to just get through it and get get to the healing process because that alone is takes time so we did a DNC um, he scheduled me for that following I think it was three days later since my appointment and um, he scheduled me for a DNC um, I know that with a DNC you can run a possible risk of infection or um, even scarring and a lot of people opt to not to do it because they don't want to risk um, possibly not being able to get pregnant again but um, my mentality was completely different and I don't regret it I don't regret it making those choices for myself both times and um, nothing about a DNC is is great however my experience this time around was amazing they were very um, caring at the hospital they took care of all my needs and um, my recovery was simple it was pretty easy um, I had some pain here and there but it was um, I feel like the best option for me so I would suggest if you are going through this um, to do what's best for you, for your body. Um, try not to listen to everything that you hear and read. Just kind of go with your gut and what you feel like is going to be best for you because ultimately it's your body. So I feel that I made the right choices for me and um, now here we are a little over two months later and I'm feeling more like myself again I mean I'm an emotional wreck but um, for the most part I am I'm okay I am not mad at God um, I'm a lot more educated this time around I'm a lot more um, experienced and I am a lot older so I think before I blamed him and I blamed the world and I was angry at the world but this time around I um, 
I'm just grateful. I'm grateful that I, I even got to be pregnant for two, two times. Um, I'm blessed to even have been able to experience that when most people can't even experience that. Um, and and I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna. I have an amazing support system, both um, here at home and outside of my home, and um, and everything happens for a reason. He has me. God has me, and uh, he will know when the right time is, and he will bless me when that time comes. And if it doesn't happen, I'm still gonna be okay because I have such amazing kids. I have three amazing children through marriage and they call me mommy and they are everything that I could have hoped and dreamed for in children. So I'm, I'm okay, I'm complete. Um, would a baby uh, of my own be a blessing? Yes, absolutely. Um, but I still welcome it with open arms. Um, but now it's just something, if it happens, it happens. Are we trying? Yes. Uh, we did decide that we would try um, again. Well, we weren't trying that last time, but we did decide that we would try this time and see what happens or at least the next three months. And if not, then I'm going to move forward and kind of uh, um, move forward into my next journey in life. And I'm only getting older and my kids are grown. <laughs> so, um, so if uh, we don't get that new baby, then it's gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay. So that, um, that is any of y'all's questions if we're gonna try again then um, yeah so we are gonna try but we'll see um, but yeah I really um, all I can say is this is my story and everyone's story is different these are my experiences both times and I'm grateful unfortunately they ended horribly and not the way I would have wanted it to but they're still my babies and they're still, it's still my story and I will forever love my my two angel babies my Leilani and unfortunately we did not get to find out the gender of this baby but we did decide we were calling um, we were calling it baby M forever so we decided to call it December. Um, I thought it was so fitting considering um, the baby would have been born in December. And I just feel like that's both a male and, fe and female name. So um, so that's what we're gonna go with. Leilani and December. And I love both of them. And I know they're looking down on us and, and I will meet them one day and I will be able to hold them one day and until that day comes I will continue to to remember them and honor them every day of my life um, and every October 15th so they will be celebrated and remembered and loved and everything those were my babies so um i hope that this story finds you um because you were just browsing and not because you're going through anything but if you are know that i am with you here spiritually um and that i'm praying for you to get through it and and I hope you do. And I hope this story helps you in any way, shape, or form. Um, 
just know that you're going to be okay. That's the only advice I can really give you is that you're going to be okay. You're going to get through it. Um, if you would like me to share my DNC story and my experience, then please comment below and I can go ahead and make a video of that. Um, but other than that, I'm going to go ahead and end this vlog. And thank you guys very much for watching. I know it was extremely different from my usual vlogs and videos. Um, but I just felt like this was absolutely necessary to record. And I have been procrastinating for so long to do it. I just needed to be in a better mind state and be emotionally ready to do this. And I think... I think today was the perfect time. So, um, so yeah, I do appreciate your guys' love and um, your support and everything on all my social media platforms. And I just thank you guys for following my journey in everything that I do. And um, I hope you guys continue to. So, again, thank you guys for taking the time to listen to my story and. I hope you are all safe in the world, wherever you're at, and stay blessed and stay glorious. Bye, guys. I was never the one to write up a song for just anyone. I, I was always the one to find myself lost in all conversations, oh. Cause I've always been told that things will unfold if you keep on waiting But then you came along and proved me all wrong, I was so mistaken Cause you glue all the pieces back together Yeah you, you take all my wrongs and make them better Yeah you, you're making me wanna try forever And I feel so free, oh my sweet baby